I'm Thomas Sparks, uh, Group 4 Lead for Experiment 4, the Air Conditioner Experiment, and uh, give you a little bit of background information. Okay, uh, so Air Conditioner, it's a heat pump. Uh, it takes heat and goes, makes it go against its natural flow, against the pump. Uh, they're reversible, uh, so you don't have to have uh, heating and uh, cooling thing in your house. Uh, and that's by the, uh, the valve that we'll see in just a second. Uh, and the experiment goal is to perform a thermodynamic uh, analysis on the AC unit. Uh, HVAC is a pretty big industry and a lot of mechanical engineers go into it. Uh, so uh, it might come up in somebody's life in here. Uh, and also uh, you just get to use the anemometer and the psychrometer, good practice, because uh, you might see that in the future. Okay, so how it works. Uh, it's working on the ideal refrigeration cycle. Uh, well, that's what I'm basing my calculations off of. It's not actually going to be ideal. Uh, so start off with the compressor and uh, ignore these numbers here because uh, they don't align with this. Uh, the compressor is going to be, uh, we're going to assume that it's isentropic. Uh, Right along here. Uh, and then next, we'll go through the condenser on this section here. And it's uh, isobaric. Uh, the capillary tube is going to have expansion here. Now, this is not uh, isentropic like uh, the compressor was uh, because it's a throttling mechanism. So, uh, by definition, it's not isentropic. Uh, so, this, if you look at four prime here, that would be if you were to introduce an isentropic uh, turbine, and uh, they don't do that because you'd be adding a whole lot of cost to your AC unit for uh, basically no gain. And then finally, we'll go to the evaporator and back in the compressor. And here you have uh, heat coming in and uh, heating up the heat from the low temperature area, heating it up there. And then finally, uh, and then also, I just want you to know the reservoir. This is what we're going to use to change the amount of freon. It's around the capillary tubes, and uh, these points where we're going to measure temperature and pressure. Okay, so procedure. Uh, start off. We want to make sure the AC is off. Uh, I'm going to check to verify that the initial temperature and pressure readings are all the same for all four. Uh, if they're not, we're going to have to do a little bit of calibration, but they should be the same. All right, then we're going to have the instructor turn on the AC, and then we're going to add as much free on the system as possible by opening up the uh, low pressure side of the valve and uh, just getting as much free on the system as possible. Uh, then uh, one group is going to use the psychrometer and the anemometer to uh, or the psychrometer, they're going to measure the dry bulb and wet bulb temperatures at the four points that I showed earlier. And then also they're going to use the anemometer to measure the uh, velocity going in so that they can get a mass flow rate. Um, then we're going to record the pressure, the pressure and temperature readings for that case. And uh, then we're going to uh, trade off between the two groups, uh, draining the freon in uh, half pound increments. Uh, it's going to be a scale. It's going to be how you measure it. Uh, from 14 to 17 pounds and half pound increments each time measuring temperature and pressure. Uh, then we're going to drain all the freon from the system as much as we can uh, and the other group will do uh, the same measurements with the psychrometer and the anemometer as the first group did. And once again we're going to measure the temperature and pressure. Uh, we'll repeat, oh, oh, that's one more second. then turn off the heat pump. Okay, so uh, this is uh, my calculations for the COP. Uh, this is just uh, assuming that going into the compressor you have saturated vapor and uh, coming out of uh, the condenser you have saturated liquid. Uh, you'll get uh, these temperatures, entropy, pressures, and enthalpies. Uh, here's your uh, TS diagram, same one we showed earlier and your uh, pressure into the diagram, as you see before you. Uh, so my predictions, uh, based on the assumptions out of the lab manual, 
uh, the pressure around the evap in the evaporator is 500 kilopascals, pressure in the condenser 1200 kilopascals. Uh, use that to get those values I just showed you. Uh, saturated uh, liquid, like we talked about. Uh, and finally, uh, the COP I got was 7.62, uh, which I thought was pretty reasonable from listening to uh, the uh, groups that went up previously. And uh, finally, I just want to go back and talk about how it, the results will probably actually look since it's not really going to be ideal. Uh, there will actually be a little bit of a pressure drop here and here. And also here, due to friction in the compressor, you will go this way. Although due to heat loss in the compressor, it will probably end up on this side. And uh, so that the heat loss in the compressor actually helps you out. And uh, any questions?